In today's episode of Locked On NBA, we chat with one of the hosts of the Locked On Mavericks podcast, Isaac Harris, about the start to the Jason Kidd era in Dallas. It's all coming up. Stick around. You are Locked On NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey guys, and welcome back to Locked On NBA. I am your Monday host, Josh Lloyd. I also host the Locked On Fantasy Basketball channel. Check me out over there. We're here in today's show to talk Dallas Mavericks with Isaac Harris of Locked On Mavs. Before I do that, this show is brought to you by Built Bar. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever, whether it's raspberry flavor, strawberry flavor, orange, mint brownie, caramel, coconut, cookies and cream. Their flavors are all amazing. They bring out limited edition flavors all the time as well. But it's not just about the taste because they taste better than all other protein bars. It's also that they're healthy. 17 to 18 grams of protein, 130 to 180 calories per bar, 4 to 5 grams of sugar, and only 4 to 5 grams of net carbs per bar. And you can get them now at 15% off at built.com by using our promo code LOCKED15. So that's L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 at built.com. Get yourself a box or boxes boxes of delicious Built Bars. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever. All right, so let's bring him in now. One of the hosts of the Locked On Mavericks podcast, Isaac Harris is here. Isaac, the Mavs have had some, some interesting games so far. They're just coming off a win today here on Sunday. Halloween victory over the Kings. It's There's been some shaky performances. How would you judge the beginning of the Jason Kidd era in Dallas? Weird. Yep. Strange. It's, I mean, I literally was just talking to some people at the game the other day. And it's like, I, I don't even know how to define it yet because we've, we've gotten a leadership council. We've gotten a 15 man, like the first coach in NBA history to play 15 players in like three quarters you know, it's we, we're four and two, but it's like I don't know how confident like we are in the team because the offense, you know, what two years ago we were setting records on offense, you know, wise and and now we're you know we score seventy five points in a game the other day, so it's it's just been weird and clunky, but we're just kind of like fight through it and can we hover it around that like five hundred level while we try to figure everything out? Yeah, look, the wins, you know, there's a less than inspiring win against the Rockets. There's a win against the Spurs and the Kings and the Raptors, all non-playoff teams last year. And then you play the two good teams, the Hawks and the, and the Mavericks, and you, you know, it's a combined 57 points in those two losses. And I think that's probably where the concern is that against those good teams, just getting the absolute pants beat off them. That, I guess, yeah. has to be a, a level of concern. And then there is that that weird stuff. There's the Leadership Council stuff. There's the Kristaps Porzingis injury where he just left a game with back tightness. Then Jason Kidd said post-game, nah, he's fine. And then he hasn't played in a week since then. So there is just a bunch of weirdness going on with this team. So let's let's start with Porzingis here. Yeah, what's what's the update on this injury? Because again, what we heard was, oh, he's fine. All right, cool. If he's fine, then why hasn't he played since Tuesday? Do we have any timetable of when he's coming back? Is there an actual injury there? Like, what's going on here? No timetable, no update. Even before the game, Jason Kidd talked to the media and was like, no update on KP. He's out for uh, for back tight, lower back tightness. So it's no update <laughs> there's there's nothing to it. it it is you know it's it's odd uh, he did leave that game in that game that he did he did, he did leave you know he wasn't playing well at no. all and it's like once he left and went to the bench they they seemed like they had a little bit more you know groove and rhythm to it maxi you know maxi kleba has been the best big for the mavericks this season i mean clearly i mean it's been six games but he's been the, the most in, impactful most important big for the mavs this season so it's like when he plays they have just they have more you know flexibility on offense and defense but but even maxi you know in the in the king's game you know he got hurt in that game and, and he he left with a back injury of his own so it, they're going to be kind of for a team that's had that has a million centers on the roster. Now suddenly they're like, oh, we kind of thin up front. This is you know complete conspiracy theory, Isaac. So debunk it. But I'm just going to put. I'm just going to say it anyway. Is there a chance Maybe. that yeah, Porzingis was playing poorly in that game where his back got hurt, and the Mavs just said we just can't with you anymore. Um, so we're just going to hold you out for a bit and see if we can uh, see if we can get a trade going on here because something's not right. It's whether it's you and the coach or you and the fans, or you and your teammates. There's something not right here. Maybe we'll just sit you out for a bit and see if we can get something that is going to benefit both of our parties as we move forward here. Now, when you, you look at how last season ended, 
you know, it was reported, you know, I think Tim and Manny ESPN, you know, reported that he had pretty much went to the team and was like, Hey, I, you know, let's find a new home basically. Yep. And, you know, if you would have asked me, this was before the front office turnover, before Rick Carlisle left, if you would ask me, you know, at the end of last season, will will everyone be back? My choice at that point would have been Porzingis would have been gone and, you know, before the start of the season. But then obviously Donnie was fired. Then Rick Carlisle left for Indiana. And then the narrative shifted because now we have Jason Kidd, it's new regime. And it's like Porzingis is healthy for the first time this off season, all this stuff. And it's like, Hey, we're going to try to make it work. So then I'm like, all right, they're really going to try to make it work. And you know, so far you know, preseason happened, the season started, they wanted to try to get, you know, KP the ball more in the post and, you know, in the mid range at the elbow and trying to do these things for him. But the problem is he just hasn't been efficient in that area. It, it wasn't, you know, it, it became the popular thing to just say, hey, Rick Carla just threw him in the corner. But it, he also put him in the corner because KP wasn't efficient in the post at the same time. So it's kind of like uh, the chicken and the egg. Which one happened first on that? So that's what happens moving forward with KP and the Mavs. We'll have to see because, you know, there was the <clears throat> chemistry sh- stuff with, with him and Luca last year, a little bit off the floor. But that seems like it's been better, you know, over the off season, it's been better to start this season, but what happens as far as his future with Dallas, your guess is as good as mine in that. And if he doesn't play another game and until they find something, I mean, Mavs fans know this Dennis Smith jr. Had lower back tightness until he was shipped off. And that was, you know, that was just the, what happened. So is it, is it already starting to, you know, linger in some Mavs fans brains a little bit on dang, is this a similar type situation? I don't know, but also don't know what his, his trademark would be around the league right now, making over $30 million a year. Luka Doncic, it, he hasn't been at his best, and you know, there's all that talk preseason while we want you know, Luka to play off ball a little bit more, but Isaac, the results of that, um, I don't know, they, they've been dreadful, really. Like it, yeah. When you've got a guy who's unbelievably dominant with the ball in his hands and sets up an offense and just... Basically, I feel like Luca's attitude a lot of this time with some of the guys that are around him are like, just everybody, just get out of the way and just let me do it. Yet the offense is calling for him not to do that, and it hasn't worked. Will there be? Is there any inkling of Luca being frustrated with this new approach of taking the ball out of his hands compared to where it was last season? The results, at, you know, six games in, are clearly not where they should be. But why is there this insistence of getting the ball out of his hands when you've got guys like Dorian Finney-Smith and Tim Hardaway trying to initiate offense when they can't really dribble very much? Like, What is the insistence of getting that ball out of Luca's hands when that has been a proven successful method? I think well, a lot of times, you know, it comes down to the fourth quarter. And it's like, Luca, we have seen Luca tired in the fourth quarter. We've seen, you know, teams even start to shift their, you know, approaches a little bit, even to this at the beginning of this season. I've seen him play up a little bit tighter on Luca, or playing the passing lanes a little bit more on Luca instead of and just giving him some of this mid range stuff. And that I think that's where it, 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 it's birthed out of this idea of like, we got to get Lucas some help to where he's not just all ball dominant. Can we have some guys that can run the offense a little bit that we can get him off the ball and get him some spot up threes to where not every single three that he's taking is step back, you know, 30 footers. So I think he would be willing to do it if we had the personnel to do it. If there was somebody on the roster, another guy who could play make and do it well i think he would be like we've seen him you know a few a handful of years ago play with Dragic on the national team and win Eurobasket, and he was sharing those duties with Dragic. he obviously loves Dragic, an older brother type figure in that but if there was somebody on the roster and that's what we're trying we're hoping that jalen brunson could be that but that was why they went after a kyle lowry you know over the, in the off season but they you know obviously they didn't get lowry so i think he'd be willing to do it but with this current roster and the current makeup of the roster, the best version of this team is with the ball in Luca's hands and doing what they've done the past you know year or so. And right now they're kind of fighting that because they want to satisfy KP. They want to get him the ball, but they want to try to get other people involved too. But I think when the dust settles, we're going to see the ball in Luca's hands just like we've seen over the past few years because that's the best version of the team. You spoke about the older brother in Goran Dragic. What's the chances that we see him in a Mavericks uniform before Christmas? I think it's very high. I think I think it's very high, especially if he gets bought out. I, yeah, I I think he I think he will be wearing uh, Dallas across his chest 
um, when we're ringing in the new year. Well, he's not even playing in Toronto. Like Delano Banton has taken that rotation spot away from Dragic. And let's be honest, he hasn't looked great up there. But there was all those that talk even before the preseason that maybe his heart wasn't in going to Toronto. And he said all the right things when you're asked by the media after that initial comment. But he's not participating up there at all. So I wouldn't think that the asking price for Goran would be particularly high. But maybe that alleviates some of that pressure on Luca, and the offense gets going. Again, Isaac, of course, you'll break all of this down for us. Along with Nick over on the Locked On Mavericks podcast throughout the season. Thanks for coming on Locked On NBA and, uh, and chatting Dallas with me. Thanks, Josh. You're the GOAT. Appreciate you.